Hey, I hope you had a good weekend. It's Monday, so uh, hopefully this will help you a little bit, okay? These are quotes about worry. I'm not speaking on worry, but it's quotes. Perpetual worry will get you to one place ahead of time, the cemetery. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a good one. We, uh, these are quotes to make you think. So here's what we're going to do. There's so much here and I've been talking about it. So I'm going to finish up today the, this whole business about the second coming. Okay. It says, but in though, um, excuse me, Mark 13, 20. So that's a lot of reading. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or, look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So be on your guard. I've told you everything ahead of time. But in those days following that distress, now, I think this is where he switches gears. And now we are talking about uh Today, you know, you know, yeah, today. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. So I do not take that literal. A lot of people take it literal. It's, I believe it's metaphor. He's just saying that there's going to be a lot of mysterious things happening. And, 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 and it's a warning sign. And it's, and notice it's after that distress, after all these false messiahs come and you and and when he says to deceive the elect that's that's people that God has said yes you're in all right and so i do not take that literally okay but some people do i say the majority do verse 26 at that time people will see this at that time people see that this is why i know it's today cuz it says at that time people will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, the believers, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know it is near right at the door, that is, Jesus coming back. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So when he says this generation, now, see, I take it that he's talking about the, the stuff before, like um, the abomination, desolation, and things like that. Then you have to ask, what is a generation? Usually it's 40 years. I don't think he's talking about that short little, the son of man coming in the clouds. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Be on guard, be alert. Now, this goes back to always be expecting Jesus to come back. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned a ta uh, task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. That's, so these, this is Jesus teaching this. And, he, and notice he says he doesn't even know when, when he's coming back. Only the Father knows. So uh, that's, that's real important knowledge to hold on to. And let me say something to you. Just as there was some mystery to the first coming of Christ, a little like, okay, is he coming as king? Is he coming as a suffering servant? You know, all, all that. There's there's mystery here. You you can't cleanly cut and say, uh, you can't draw a chart and say, okay, this has to happen, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And when this happens, Jesus comes back. Okay? Because that's the temptation that some people fall into. They love drawing their charts. They love mapping it out. And I know they say, well, I'm just saying... It could be this. What I don't understand is it. what changes your life is to expect that Jesus could come back anytime. Okay? That is what should be changing your life. Not a chart. So why why spend time on something that doesn't give anything back? What, what 
you need to focus on, it, first of all, gee, God's always watching us. So whether Jesus comes back or not, God's always watching us. God knows when we sin, and he tells us our sins will be shouted from the rooftops. In other words, so th that thing, that reveal, you know, uh, talking about, uh, we're talking about character. I talked about character this past Sunday. That, that's the kind of character we ought to have. That, that when, when nobody else is around and only God is watching, we realize God is watching and I should behave myself. And God knows my thoughts and I should have cleaner thoughts. So, uh, but th to boot, to add to that, is that Jesus is coming back and we don't know the hour. Hence, that's why I tell, it says, somebody leaves you in charge of their house. You, you don't know whether they're coming back at midnight, at dawn, all that. So I hope you have a great day. Hope you're thinking about Jesus, thinking about what he gave uh, to, to see you get into heaven and what you're going to be, uh, uh, that you'll be ready for Jesus to come back. Yes, or prepare to meet him. Lord, thank you for this time together. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for this Monday. I pray that we'd have a good week. Give us a good attitude, good mindset. In Jesus' name, amen.